Thank you. All right, so Ms. Gumman, we were talking about in uh, walking through the sheriff's impound lot. You recall that? Yeah. And someone had an idea about running Molly through a test. Yes. And you had testified there were at least six cars, possibly more? Yes. Right. And what was the idea um, going into this situation? Um, because human remains detection dogs is kind of unknown, um, I, I think they were curious to see if she could even do what um, I was claiming she could do. So they just asked me, um, could you sniff these vehicles and tell us um, would she be able to detect if there had been a body there and remove the vehicles in the impound? Okay. So the idea was La Plata County Sheriff's Office impound lot, they know which vehicles there have been bodies in and they asked you to run Molly on. Yes. Okay. Did you know which vehicles had had bodies in them? No. All right. Did you, in fact, allow Molly to search the vehicles in the impound lot? Because they asked, um, I took her off her traffic lead and put her, sent her with her command to search for the odor of human remains. And she ended up um, off lead away from me, indicating on two vehicles to the odor of human remains. And so at all the vehicles in the impound lot, two of them she indicates trained final response on. Yes. At the time, did you know the significance of those two vehicles or whether or not she was accurate? I, I did not know anything going doing it and then afterwards um, one of the investigators did objection is going to be all here so I agree judge actually okay. I'm going to stop her there all right. and as you testified before you tend to collect information after the work right um, yes okay I'll let the investigators testify as to that separately but they they made you aware of whether Molly was accurate or not and then you went on with further search efforts yes thank you so at this time, uh, in that same day of August 5th, 2013, were you going to search Mark Redwine's residence? Um, they asked me if I would be willing to have Molly search outside of Mr. Redwine's residence. Okay. And generally speaking, we talked a little bit about the information you had going in, but it would have been that there's a missing child, and you would have at least known that he had been seen at that house last. Um, I think what I knew was that um, there was um, video that Dylan had arrived at the airport and he had been at uh, Walmart. Um, I don't recall how anyone knew if he had been at his father's house last. Okay. And you were going to search the exterior first of his father's house? Yes. Did you have a search warrant or consent to do that? Um, the La Plata County Sheriff investigators made a phone call to Mr. Redwine and asked him by phone if um, a, a dog could sniff around his house on the outside. And did he give consent for that? Um, I heard a male voice say yes. Okay. Now, what did you do in terms of did you drive over there with investigators? Um, I believe we had a rental vehicle, the other handler and I, so we drove there separate, but in a caravan. Okay. At this time, Judge, can I publish People's 24 previously admitted? Yes. Does that look consistent with the residents that you did the searching work on that day? Yes. Okay. And then was there a driveway with a truck, a Chevy truck in there at the time that you went to the home as well? There was a Chevy truck parked near the house. So can you explain to the jury when you arrived at the house what you did with Molly? Um, when we arrived, I took her off her traffic lead and gave her command to search for the odor of human remains and just followed behind her as she moved through. I don't know how large the property is. Um, and we went around the house. There was some other smaller outbuildings and even an open septic system okay. um, on the property. Was there like a camper trailer thing there? Um, you know, I recall some sort of something, either a storage container or a camper, something of that nature that was, um, would be, is that the south side of the house? That direction? This, this is the, the east side? This would be 
that you're facing the east side of the house? Yeah, so beyond the house, out of the picture. Okay. And then I'm going to ask you to just explain to the jury um, if Molly had any trained final responses on the exterior of the house, but I know it's been a long time. Did you bring your reports if you need them to refresh your memory? Um, I can use my reports, but I think I can recall um, quite a bit of great. what she did. That's great. Can you explain to the jury what Molly did when you searched the exterior of Mark Redwine's residence? Okay. Um, she was off traffic lead, and as we began moving through the area, um, she provided her trained foul response that she detected the odor of human remains um, near the garage doors, which would be on the, if I'm cardinally not challenged, it's on the east side of the house, near what to the south. Okay. The, um, what we're looking at here on the left? Yes. Yeah. Um, she ended up providing six trained final response to the odor of human remains outside of the residence um, by the garage, um, front door, um, under an open staircase that's on the south side, and it was just dirt. Mm -hmm. Can you see the bottom couple of steps right there? Oh, yeah. yeah. And then um, she went up the open staircase and provided a train final response on a small platform, which was near an open window. She indicated there's a creek or a little body of water that runs um, maybe along the roadway and then tucks to the north. And at the edge of the yard, she stuck her nose down in the creek and then backed out and gave her train final response to the order of human remains. And then she provided a train final response by a small shed in what I would describe as the southwest corner behind the house. Okay. What are some reasons a dog might indicate on uh, water? You said a creek, right? Oh, um, well, uh, one thing could be is do you have human remains, generic human remains, um, in a waterway that's flowing into there? Um, my experience has been that water bolsters odor. So if there's... Um, uh, decomposing body on a hillside, the dogs will often indicate to the waterway that's below it just by the nature of the rain coming down and then drains down into there. So they're telling you there's odor down there. What about like washing hands in there with something on it, things like that? Can that cause a dog to indicate on an area like that? Um, you mean somebody just washes their hands in a creek with soap and water? No, with oh. someone has human remains. Um, boy. I'm going to say that based on the time when we were there, I would not say that would have caused it it's to be on the safe side um, outside of the possibility of the dog indicating. Okay. I think I answered that correctly. Sure. Were there areas of like entrance and exit to the home that were indicated uh, training final response? She, one of her indications was by the front door um, on that, on this side of the house. And now you've talked about, uh, well, let me ask about a few other areas. There was the camper trailer that we talked about. Uh, any indications on the camper trailer? I did, Molly did not indicate to the odor of human remains around that or at that. Any trained final responses on the septic area? She did not indicate at the septic area. And then you said there was a truck in the driveway of Chevy, right? Mm -hmm. Did you bring Molly to the truck to do that search as well? Um, the pickup truck that was there um, was close to the garage door um, on that southwest corner. So I don't recall if it was facing or backed in, but there was, um, I don't know, six to ten feet between the garage and the truck. And where her first indication, train final response was, because I'm looking for just information, I worked her around the truck off lead, and she did not indicate at the truck or on the vehicle. Okay. So it's fair to say there were a lot of areas that Molly didn't indicate. That's correct. It, and you said you've searched houses where there's no indications at all, right? Correct. So what was your conclusion drawn from the train final responses at this point in time? Um, based on our, uh, my, 
training experience with Canine Molly, um, there was a large amount of human remains odor present on the exterior of that property. So what did you do next? Um, explained all of that information to the agency, talked about are there other explanations for it, um, and then uh, I believe they made another phone call to a male who I was told was Mr. Redline, and they had a discussion about wanting to go inside the house with the dog. And did they again obtain the uh, consent to go inside the home at this point? I did hear them obtain consent by a male voice on the phone. Okay. When that happened, did you in fact go into the house and do a search with Molly inside the house? Yes. Can you explain that to the jury, please? And, um, and not the findings yet, but okay. just the process that you used. Okay. Um, the first thing that I always like to do is put the dog away in the vehicle and I just do a quick walk through, not touching anything, but I want to make sure for safety issues, there's no um, cat running around or um, maybe um, mouse trap, anything of hazard to the dog. Um, and then also I have a mental layout of the size of the house so that I have my clock ticking in my head of how long I want to spend in there based on uh, earlier testimony about, I don't want to spend a lot of time in there if I'm not getting anything by the dog. Okay, so you did a walkthrough? I did. And then when you were done with the walkthrough, what, what's the process look like to work Molly through the house? Um, so we utilized the front door. I walked in, law enforcement was present. I couldn't tell you where they were. You well, can ask them a question okay. like that, but focus, if I can focus you on your search itself. Okay. Um, she was taken off traffic lead, given her command to search for the odor of human remains. And on the first floor, she indicated and in, provided her trained final response to the odor of human remains in seven locations. So let me, before we get into the details, did she search the downstairs and the upstairs of the home? Yes. And there were areas where she had trained final responses and areas where she didn't? That is correct. Were there entire rooms where she didn't have a trained final response? Yes. And then were there rooms where she had multiple trained final response? Yes. Right. Judge, at this time, may I purchase people's 470 and 471? You may. So, Ms. Gumman, have you seen people's 470 and 471 before? Um, yes. Are they diagrams that look consistent with the layout of that house from your memory? Um, the diagram I looked at, I thought was different. May I approach? Yes. John, may I ask what's going on? Yeah, that's good. So, I guess we'll find out now. Judge, coaching a witness in the middle of their testimony is... Um, I don't believe I saw any uh, communication going this way, Mr. Uh, Moran. All right, thank you. So, the, the blue on the diagrams, does that indicate locations of trained final responses based on your report and memory? Yes, um, I had seven trained final responses and there's six here. So, so is one missing from the diagram? Yes. Okay. Um, I'm going to ask that another witness lay the foundation for the furniture that created the diagram. Oh. So for purposes of this diagram, just the locations themselves, they look fair and accurate as to where the trained final responses were. There is one um, blue that's across the room from where I recall her indicating. Okay. Would it refresh your memory and your report to take a look at your report and take a look at the diagram as well. Yeah. Okay. Your Honor, uh, if I may, there's been no testimony that there's a recollection that needs to be refreshed. She's just saying it's wrong. Well, I think she can look and see if it's consistent with the report, which I think is what Mr. Jones is trying to do. I don't see a problem with that. So then I, the foundation, the objection would be foundation then. If it's right, I, I understand your objection. Um, I, I don't think it's a problem. So. Uh, you want to you have your report there? I don't. Okay. Mr. Johnson, do you want to provide? Yes, Your Honor. May I approach? Yes. 
So, um, Ms. Governor, Mr. Moran, know what discovery number you're looking at? 2734, Your Honor. So, Ms. Governor, I'm just going to ask that you review the exhibit and refresh your memory and don't read it out loud. Mm -hmm. Let's see if it refreshes your memory as to the locations. May I approach? Yeah. Okay. that refresh your memory? Yes. And is there still one location missing that you could perhaps indicate with a pen on the diagram itself? Yes. Okay. May I approach you to retrieve the exhibit, Your Honor, yes. and also with the pen? Yes. Thanks. So, Ms. Gowen, are the locations on the diagram that are there accurate? From the best of my recollection, yes. And then can you use that blue pen to indicate the area where uh, where one's missing? And I think you're writing on the sleeve. Yeah, oh, I'm sorry. That's okay. Sleeve. It's going to write better if you take it out of the sleeve. If you want to just initial that, I mean, it's kind of clear from my looking at it that that's what it is. But I, I'd sure like to look at it. You, you may. <laughs> Do you want to surprise on this one, is it? Well, Judge, it's in the report, but maybe we both approach. It, it is thing. not in the report I have. Uh, <laughs> well, you don't need to editorialize. You can come look at it. Then. Is the diagram people's 470 now fair and accurate as to the locations where Molly had a train final response? Yes. And then 471, does that also document the train final responses consistent with your memory and your report? Yes. Okay. All right, at this time I move to admit people's 470 and 471 into evidence. Okay. Mr. Moran? Commissioner of War, dear. Go ahead. Molly or Biddy was trained to do something called pinpointing, correct? Um, I think we're, we always work to get as close to source as we can, which I use the term pinpointing. Is that what you want to know? Yes, ma'am. Okay. What pinpointing means is that the dog is trained specifically to go where the strongest concentration of an odor is, right? Yes. So, just most generally, if there's a body sitting here, if the dog's doing what it's trained to do, it would go to the body precisely and alert on the body, right? Objection, this is cross-examination. Well, it may be void I want to listen a little more. What, what I'm getting at here is that you didn't create this exhibit, right? I personally did not. And you've seen multiple versions of this, right? There was another one that was provided many years ago that you've, you've seen and the furniture was in the wrong place, right? Um, I've seen different versions, I think. Um, and whoever is creating these exhibits... Hold on. Hold on. This, I think, is beyond. I mean, why do we care about who created it? It's just based on her memory. If it's accurate, it's where the spots were. That's all that really matters for this. It, ex except that the spots are a specific location where the dog does a final trained response. And what we have here is big circles looped around areas of the room. And unless the dog is sitting 50 different times, what we have is a misleading exhibit. And that's the basis of this objection. I'm getting there with this witness. So you're nodding yes, I think. No, uh, that's, that's not the way I'm, I'm taking this testimony. So she has testified uh, that it's accurate. You can get into that on cross-examination if you want to, but it doesn't go to the admissibility. May I just ask that final question? So well, it's accurate. See. Okay, yes, yeah, that you can. So ask it again since we were talking. Ma'am, when the dog alerted, say, for instance, at um, H in this diagram, what's been drawn there is a square that encompasses maybe... 16th of the room, right? 
uh, there is a square um, H. I couldn't tell you the um, dimensions of the rooms to help you with that question. Sure. Let me let me just say this. The dog didn't alert in all of those locations. The dog alerted in just one location, right? Tina and Molly provided seven trained final responses to very specific locations on that first floor that we're looking at. And you would agree with me this is not a specific location. This is an area of a room, right? Um, I think you could go either way with that. I'm sorry. Um, it's you know, is it two feet by two feet? I, I don't know. Yeah. How precise an area is the dog? Hold on, hold on a second. So we're, you're arguing over four square feet? Yeah. Okay. That can be done across examination. Mm -hmm. The, the uh, exhibit, which one was this? This was 470 and 471, Your Honor. Oh, that's right, because it was first and second floor? Yes, Your Honor. Uh, they're both admitted. Okay. Thank you, Judge. So let me be clear too, Ms. Gummins. You're going to testify to the jury where the trained final responses were specifically, right? To the best of my ability, I will try to pinpoint where she had odor. And that was all indicated in your report previously from back in August of 2013 when you did the work, right? Yes. Okay. Is this a demonstrative type of exhibit to help the jury when they're looking over things to know the areas of the room? Um, I couldn't say if it's demonstrative, I think. Uh, maybe that's so much of a legal question. Does this, does this exhibit just help the jury see what we're talking about? That's what I would look at it as. Okay. So I'm going to ask at this point to publish People's 470. Ms. Gumman, I do want you to be specific. And so I've got a pointer uh, right on the end of the bench there. Yes. And there's a microphone in the back. Would you mind walking the jury through where Molly's findings were? Um, in your own words. Sure. Thank you. Are you going to, while she's moving that way, is, is this being admitted as a demonstrative? Yes. Okay. Judge, to be, this is a summary of her findings on a map that give the general areas, and she's going to testify in detail so that the jury can later refer back to it. It's been admitted, and I just ask that she be able to testify about it. Well, she's going to. Thank you, Judge. Don't waste any time. You can pull the microphone out of the stand and just pop out. You don't have to. And you can move the stand if it's in your way, but you have to kind of stand out to the side so all the jurors can see what you're pointing at. Okay? Um, Whatever works for you is fine. Um, I'll just go through the locations of where she indicated. And what I mean is she provided a trained file response that she detected the odor of human remains. The first one was um, where the floor and the log are at the entrance to the door inside the house. It's like a welcome mat by rug. Um, she indicated in the corner low, and there, from the best of my recollection, there was a stand there. But I would say that the indication was not on the stand, it was this corner with the floor. Um, she indicated by sticking her nose into the sofa on the feet portion of a brown couch um, and provided her chain panel response to the other two remains. She indicated um, there was like a fireplace um, or a wood burning stove with. Uh, partition that came up and she was indicating right at the corner of it and there was also right in that same vicinity um, fireplace um, item. And from the best of my recollection, I couldn't determine if it was the corner of that concrete step up or where the objects were. She hit on both sides of the um, stairs going up. One was a speaker, and one was the banister. But it was both of them were low um, by the first step. So when you pointed to the speaker, is that the area that we missed on the diagram itself, but that you've now drawn in? Yes. Thank you. And then she did not indicate 
all these other areas, her nose was in there. She did not indicate in the bathroom. And then in this spare bedroom on the floor was a black duffel bag that she indicated trained final response on that black duffel bag. I'd like to move to People's 471, please. Does this show the areas of the train final response in the upstairs of the home? Yes. Can you please talk to the jury about the specifics of that? Uh, Molly still off leash worked through this area on the second floor and um, she provided three train final response to the older human remains um, right in front of the bathroom thing. Um, the area right under the sink, um, just directly under the sink, but on the cupboard in front of the washing machine, and then on the floor in this far corner of the bedroom on the opposite side of that bed. A spot right there. Um, she didn't indicate anywhere else on the page. And then those blue arrows to the left of the map, are those consistent with that area you testified before under the stairs? indication, train final response under an open staircase. There's so that, um, some dirt there. So that's the staircase coming down from the master bedroom. Yeah. Yes. But nothing in the in the bedroom to the right at all. Um, she was brought into this area and she did not provide her train final response in the in this bedroom or that space. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, if you could grab a seat. So is this, uh, let me just ask you a general question, Ms. Gumman. Is this typical of every house that you go in or is this notable for the order of human remains? It's not ever typical. Um, I would say that I have been um, in scenes before where the dog gives multiple indications to the odor of human remains, train final response. Um, and I would say there was a large source of human remains odor there based on my experience. Okay. In the living room itself, did you watch Molly's behavior specifically in the living room area? Um, I watched her everywhere that she worked. Do you, is that consistent with the odor of large source of human remains in the living room as well? What it indicates to me is... Your Honor, I'm going to object to the characterization here. Um, that's beyond previous rulings of this court as to what's admissible. Yes. Well, I don't know about that, but why don't you start to answer the question by what does it indicate to you? So why don't you answer that question that you were starting to answer, even though that's not what you were asked? As a general rule, if I were to come into someone's home, um, that there had been no large amount of human remains odor or human remains odor, I would not get that level of number of trained final responses. Okay, thank you. And you talked about um, transfer of odor before, you recall that? Yes. So when you have this many locations, is it possible if someone's moving about within the room with either the human remains themselves or handling them that could leave indicator or leave odor in different locations? Yes. Um, it's definitely possible that um, touching a human body that's deceased or stepping around it um, could cause some of these trained final responses. Did you do searches the next day up on an area called Middle Mountain Road? Yes. I think you testified about this a little bit earlier, but was this August 6th of 2013? Um, August 6th and 7th, okay. we conducted searches on Middle Mountain. And did you go up there with a series of investigators, a group of investigators from the case? Yes. And what were you setting out to do on Middle Mountain Road? Um, my intention was simply to try to assist them in locating any other um, human remains in the vicinity of where some human remains have been located. Did they take you to a trailhead? They did. And did they ask you to work Molly in that general area of the trailhead? Um, there was a discussion about what would be the optimal 
um, way to conduct any further locating of human remains. And so I started where they had recovered some stuff and purposefully pushed out um, to look for, um, as graphic as it is, animals will sometimes step in it, feed on it, and then they can carry it a short distance um, to feed on it again. So there might have been some other remains to be recovered. Okay. So did you go down kind of a, a trail? Does that sound familiar? I know it's a long time ago. <laughs> Um, there was a trail in the first day's effort that we did move down. Okay. Can you just explain to the jury how you work Molly in this area? Um, but from my best practices would be is I actually want to allow the dog to go to the area where there has been some recovery to take out the conflict of the dog being downwind and wanting to go pursue it. So I would have allowed her to um, move around in that area and then start to move out. Um, again, I'm just simply trying to put the dog's nose um, in areas maybe that no one else had been and or if something had been moved around that we might be able to locate. Okay. And how did you work her off leash? She was off leash. Okay. And did you have any GPS coordinates or anything like that when you went into it or you just you were looking at an area you were going to search? Um, I carry a GPS and if and when a dog gives me out in the woods or side of a mountain, uh, trained final response that they detect the odor of human remains. I step up to where the dog's indicating and I um, push a GPS mark and um, say to whoever's there, I'm getting something right in this vicinity. I don't usually look for it. I keep moving because my job is done. Um, someone else can rake or sift or whatever they want to do. Okay. And your understanding going in was this area had previously been searched and items have been gathered, collected, et cetera. That's my understanding. Did you work Molly off leash and get trained final responses on that hillside and Middle Mountain Road? I, I did. And did that include both the 6th and the 7th of 2013? Yes. Your Honor, I'm going to approach with People's 520, please. All right. So, Ms. Gummond, I've handed you a to mark this People's Exhibit 520. Have you seen that map before? Yes. Now, there are yellow markers that were previously introduced through an exhibit, People's 470. And then there are additional markings on there. Uh, are they in blue? Um, they're blue. Okay. Those blue markings, well, let me start here. In terms of the yellow markings, is that anything you observed or something that is just part of the map? That's part of the map. There wasn't anything there when I was there. Okay. And like I said, that's People's Exhibit 470 introduced that information. Now on that, you've included here, are those accurate to your GPS coordinates and the blue marks to give context to that same area of the mountain? My GPS marks were then um, transferred to um, my report and so these are the GPS coordinates. So like in your report, you list the latitude and longitude yes. type of coordinates. Yes. And then those are placed onto that map 520? Yes. Is it fair and accurate of the places where Molly had trained final responses? To the best of my recollection and based off of the recreation of the GPS coordinates. Move to admit 520 into evidence, Your Honor. Mr. Brin. I have these G I have GPS coordinates associated with this day. This document was provided to me today, so um, I have not been able to independently verify it. Judge, it I looks need to, similar. I need to clarify. All right. So I gave Mr. Marin this last week. The court will remember the conversation, perhaps, but I, I emailed this to him in advance last week, so he'd have the weekend with it. This is simply the printed copy with the exhibit sticker. So if he had looked at that, he would have reviewed it, and that's the same document. Hopefully that's helpful. All right. Any other objections? Yeah, that is helpful. I, I've looked at so many of these that they're blending, but um, we're, we're making our own, so no objections. All right. All right, please admit it. 
Thank you, Your Honor. So with regard to 520, um, may I publish, Judge? You may. document you have in some yes just needs to be slid over a little uh let me see oh you're good Can you just explain to the jury the work that Maui did out there on Middle Mountain Road over the course of those two days, please? Um, those are the GPS coordinates that I recorded where she gave her train final response to the odor of human remains. Um, that's done over two days. Okay. And is it a total of 12 times that she indicated? Yes. Yeah. Right. And then did you find any yourself, any human remains actually out there? I did not. Now, may I approach the pointer, Judge? You may. Now, I know you're assuming some of these that another witness has laid foundation for in yellow, correct? Yes. Okay. But let's work it with a scenario. I'll give you a hypothetical. Let's say that a human remains a body put somewhere in this general area. And about nine months of scavenging, weather, water, snow, rain, all that had occurred. And let's assume that these are actual locations where human remains or items from an individual were located. Working under that assumption, does this make sense that Molly would have trained final responses in these types of areas? Yes, because her indications were for all intents and purposes, downhill. So drainage would have caused some odor to travel down and or critters. So if a body had been torn apart somewhere in here and dispersed in the general pattern you're seeing here, and then if snow had melted and, and water had run, you might expect to see human remains odors in these types of areas. That's correct. That's something that you've seen in the field before. Yes. Thank you. I finally want to draw your attention to February 13th of 2014. Did you return to the Durango area? I guess that would have been about six months later. Yes. And then were you going to do a, another search based on a search warrant for a Dodge truck? Yes. Okay. Um, can you tell the jury where that was to occur and what was going to happen? Um, it was a vehicle, and my understanding is it was a Dodge pickup that was owned by Mr. Redwine, and um, the Plata County Sheriff's Department investigators wanted to see or have Molly sniff the exterior and or interior of that vehicle for the order of human remains. Where was that done, do you recall? Um, it was at their same facility that we did the other um, sniffs of clothing. Any concerns about having the clothing there and then having the truck there, or do you take precautions related to that? I don't recall if I, on that one, I don't recall if I actually had her search through the whole space again. I do know that the vehicle was not in the same vicinity in that big building as where the other part had been done, because we would have discussed that. So we're talking about a big warehouse. Yeah. And then uh, did you take precautions for queuing going into a situation like this doing this work? Yes. Um, my usual um, took her off traffic lead and um, gave her a command to search for the odor of human remains. Did, did uh, everyone else stand back out of the way kind of thing? Yes. All right. Um, so what did that search, well, before I get into the search itself, Judge, may I approach with people's 472, 473, 
Ms. Gumman, have you seen those exhibits before? Yes. Do those fairly and accurately depict with the similar blue highlights areas where Molly had a train final response? Yes. Is that the same Dodge truck? Yes. Your Honor, at this time I move to admit people's exhibits 472, 473, and 474 in evidence. Mr. Moran. Your Honor, the same objection is that what we have these shapes drawn on the image and a, and a dog that pinpoints the precise location. So if this is misleading, we object on that basis. Okay. That objection is overruled. You can cross examine on it. It'll be an area for the jury to weigh. So 472, 473, and 474 are admitted. Thank you, Your Honor. I'm going to start with um, people's 472, please. Now, looking at 472, um, while I have this up, can you talk the jury through the work that Molly did and the areas that she indicated, and then I can navigate through 473 and 474 as applicable? Um, I would have begun with her awfully, but I would work a little closer to her and start her, just as my habit, on the front driver tire. I released her from traffic lead and set, uh, gave her command to search for the odor of human remains. Um, she moved ahead of me, but along the vehicle, to the back of the truck, to the back tailgate, and walked um, towards the passenger front area. I did observe her stutter step or pause momentarily on that back passenger door, um, just the area. She kept moving. I then turned around, um, as I always do, and came back along the vehicle with her moving ahead of me, going behind the um, passenger side, the back of the truck. And when she got to the passenger, I'm sorry, the front driver back door, she stopped her forward motion and sniffed at the seam. Um, she's a small dog, hence Biddy. Um, so it was just a little bit up from the bottom of the truck and then provided her train final response of a spit that she detected the odor of human remains. Is that what we see on 472, generally speaking? That's the general area. Okay. Continuing on, I'm going to publish 473. Was there further work done or should I publish 474 first? 473. Okay. This is 473. Based off of her providing a train final response on the outside of the vehicle, I offered to place her on the inside to see if she could provide any information or not. Um, I opened up the driver door and she climbed in and moved directly to the back of the truck seat. And um, there were uh, luggage back there, and she pushed to um, the inside on the seat, which you can see in the diagram, um, past the bags, and um, backed up and gave her train final response of a sit that she detected the odor of human remains in that area. Okay. And that's the back seat or the driver's side? Yes. Anything in the front seat or the driver's side? I don't recall getting any indication in the driver's front seat. And there's no train final responses noted in your report from any other areas of the interior of the vehicle? Um, no other indications in the interior of the vehicle, that's correct. Okay. And then did you continue to search the exterior of the vehicle as well? The only other thing that I routinely do is um, if a dog provides its train final response to the order of human remains, on the exterior of the vehicle, I will also offer to place the dog in the back bed of the pickup. Um, she, I lifted her up to place her in there she, from the back and she moved forward and dropped her nose, um, placing it near the wheel well on the driver's side. May I publish 474, Judge? Yes. Thank you. You said the wheel well by the driver's side? Yes. And within that big blue box, 
she indicated. Um, so let me just touch it. Yeah, if you could just point to her, if you can be more specific, that's great. She provided her, she sniffed right in there and then uh, gave her trained final response to fit that she detected the odor of human Okay, thank you. Now, when you put a, a Molly or any canine in the back of a truck, is that canine going to hit every time and do a trained final response every time? No. What about the suggestion that you're putting the dog up there so the dog should know? My handler wants the dog to indicate on something. Um, good question. Um, again, I can't say with 100% certainty that me placing her up there caused her to cue. Uh, I'm sorry, caused her to false alert, but she had already given me other indications. And the only reason I didn't let her jump up in there is because she's small and trying to prolong her working life, so I would have lifted her near the tailgate, and I also wouldn't leave her in there very long. So this is pursuant to your typical procedure. You get some kind of train funnel response on the exterior, now you're going to move the dog to the interior, and the dog's going to work it. Is this what you would do in any truck? Ask and answer and quite leading. It is pretty leading, so let's sustain that. So I, I asked you a question that sort of recapped what you'd already said, right? So let me ask you a different question. Is this how you normally proceed under these circumstances? Yeah. Answered as well. Okay. Well, this I think this is okay, and she answered yes. So go ahead. Thank you. And in your experience with Molly and with other uh, human remains detection dogs, do they always give you a trained final response in the back of a pickup truck under these circumstances? No. So was this notable information to you? To me as the handler, just to give information. Okay. And in contrast, we talked about the Chevy truck that had been at the residence, right? On that truck, was there any train final response on the exterior? I did not get a train final response to that vehicle specifically. So very different than this vehicle? Yes. Now, if... Um, we see some stuff in the back of the truck, straps and, and chains and such. See what I'm talking about in the picture? Yes. That kind of stuff there, is that the kind of stuff that can hold odor in your experience? It's possible. Okay. And given that you're aware that this search happened over a year after um, the disappearance, is it within Molly's ability to be able to find um, the odor of human remains under these circumstances? Yes. So, Ms. Gumman, um, <clears throat> I want to ask you in total about your expert opinion. Um, in your expert opinion as a canine handler and the other ways that the court has qualified you, did Molly locate human remains odor in the places that are on the map that the jury is going to have from Middle Mountain Road? In my experience, she provided her trained final response that she detected the odor of human remains in fairly specific places on the mountain. And is that going to be, as you've described before, large source of human remains, or how would you word it? I can never say with 100% certainty. Um, I've tried to train her to tell me about large sources of human remains. Um, and just based off the number of indications, I would have to say it was a larger source. Okay. What's your expert opinion on the um, odor in the two vehicles in the impound lot? Um, the two vehicles that Molly indicated to in the impound um, were consistent trained final responses that she was detecting the odor of human remains. Okay. Similar question regarding the, the Dodge truck and the truck bed. Did you reach a similar conclusion in your expert opinion as to what Molly was detecting? Um, I believe that she was detecting the odor of human remains in the back of the pickup. And then with regard to the defendant's clothing, did you reach conclusions as to what Molly was detecting with a train final response on the defendant's clothing? Yes, that um, she was detecting the odor of human remains. And that would have been on the, uh, how many of the four items? Um, three out of the four. Not the undershirt. 
And then finally, in the defendant's house, uh, some rooms were cleared and some rooms had trained final responses. Correct. With regard to where the trained final responses are, what's your expert opinion as to what Molly was detecting? Um, based off of her trained final responses in the home um, and the number of them, it, it lends itself to me that there was a large source of human remains odor and um, not, not a couple drops of blood. Thank you. Russ? Thank you, Your Honor. Um, several new things for me today, one of which included your discussion of on a mountainside or out in the great outdoors that you would want to take the dog to a, a location where there were known items. But I can rephrase that if you'd like. Um, what I'm talking about is when you went to Middle Mountain because of the way the odor and the scent ranges and it might be downwind, that you want to understand where things have been found, right? Um, I'll try and clarify. Um, my practice is if an agency calls and says, we found some human I, remains. I understand that oh. part of the practice. But what I'm talking about specifically is that when you went to Middle Mountain, you went to the trailhead and down the trail, Susan B. got sick or was having trouble with the altitude, um, you were aware that this is a location where items had been found, right? Yes. And so the idea is that you don't want to keep going back to places that have already been discovered. What's useful is to find new things, right? Correct. Cover new area. And so I know you discussed this sort of at length. In certain spots, like a house, you don't want to know where things have been found. You want to go in with as open a mind as possible, right? Correct. But at, at least at a middle mountain, on that occasion, you wanted to have some idea so you're not retreading the same ground because there's such a distance and, and other concerns, correct? Correct. All right. Um, and Your Honor, if I might approach, I want to grab something out of that box. Give The description of this was, was remarkable. Um, as I understand it, the, these items were all placed in the paper bag, right? The initial search? Yes, ma'am. Um, three bags with multiple items, some not. Makes and sense that these bags that are wrapped up in plastic with these items were the bags that these things were in when you did the search at Area 51? Yes. And Area 51 is what they call that garage at the sheriff's office, right? Or the Pepsi building? Right. You wrote in your report Area 51. Oh, yes. And, and so while you're in Area 51, all of these things are in the paper bags that are here with them on the table, correct? Yes. And so you have Molly, they're, they're all six feet apart, right? At least six feet apart. And so you have Molly come up to each eye Bag. And Molly alerts to this bag and this bag, right? The yes. one with the jeans, one with one with the shoes. Yeah. Right? So then after the first alert to one of these bags, that bag is taken off the floor and the dog is sent out to sniff again, right? Correct. And then on the second sniffing, the dog comes up on the shoes, alert final train response to the shoes, right? To the bag. Uh, you're right, thank you. To the bag. Yes. And then that those two items are both picked up, right? To the best of my re recollection, I would have had them move them out of the area. So all that's remaining then is the bag with the blue shirt and the green shirt inside it, right? Yes. And they're in there together in a paper bag, right? Yes. And have been now, since this was on August 5th, 2013, for 100 and four days, but a while. I mean, since November of 2012 until you arrived in August 2013, right? Yes. And so Molly comes up to these items and she looks you in the eye, right? Yes. 
and she did a big sniff, right? Yes. And she walked away from this bag. Yes. Okay. So then to continue what you were doing in the Area 51 Center, you had each bag open, correct? Yes. And there's butcher paper laid out on the floor in Area 51, and, and the contents of the bag are put on the butcher paper, right? Yes. You also write garbage bags, though. So is there butcher paper and then garbage bags laid on top of the butcher paper? I don't recall. It's been Sorry. so long, true. Um, so after that process, Molly comes up, sniffs the shoes again, right, and does a final change of thought. Outside of the bag, yes. Yes, ma'am. So while they're sitting there on the garbage bag and the butcher paper, anyway, does it, sniffs it, does the final train response after looking at you, right? Yes. And um, you actually went up and looked at the shoes, right? I did walk up there. And Tanya Goldbright see that there's, there's some stuff on the shoes, right? Yes. Some brownish red, looks like maybe it was once liquid on the shoes. Yes. Uh, can you point that out, may I approach? Yes. There's, um, I don't recall which shoe, but that's consistent with the area of brown, reddish substance liquid on the shoe. The word neg written next to it when you looked at the shoe? Oh, I didn't see any writing on the shoe. In your former employ as a law enforcement official, did you become familiar in your training and experience with agencies like what we call here, called out a Bureau of Investigation, testing things like that? Um, am I familiar with how that piece of evidence may have been processed? Yes, ma'am. Um, from my experience, I have an overview, knowledge of it, yes. And it makes sense that if they tested it, they might have been who wrote neg on there. Possibly. Be negative. Sure. Okay. So, you take a look at the shoes. You saw some investigator Goldbright after the dogs alerted to him, and then uh, the shoes and what has been laid out on the garbage bag or butcher paper, all of that collected and taken away, right? Yes. And then we've got the jeans and the blue shirt and the green shirt, none of which are in bags anymore, laid out, correct? With the bags, but they're exposed. Okay. So then the dog comes up on the jeans, and the dog alerts the jeans, right? Yes. And where it says neg all over the jeans, that wasn't written on there when you saw the jeans, right? I don't recall any writing on the jeans. So Molly does her final trained response, sniffs deeply, looks you in the eye, and sits down to indicate she thinks this smell, or what you think is her indicating, uh, that there is the smell of human remains on those jeans, right? Correct. Okay. So the jeans are picked up and taken away. And then the remaining items laying on the floor are the blue shirt and the green shirt, right? Yes. Molly goes up to the blue shirt and she does this thing again where she takes a deep, audible inhale, right? Yes. And she looks you right in the eye. Correct. And does her final trained response indicating to you that she's detecting human remains, she's been cued, but anyway, she's doing her final trained response on the blue shirt. Correct. So then the blue shirt is removed from the ground and taken away, right? Yes. And then it's just the green shirt sitting out on the ground, right? Yes. And the blue shirt and the green shirt had been faced apart, right? Um, when the bag was open, they were not faced apart. They were still close to each other. Okay. But the blue shirt was, was then removed, right? Yes. So then Molly is commanded to go find cadaver again with just the green shirt laying on the ground, right? Correct. And she comes up to the green shirt. She takes a big sniff. She looks you right in the eye and then walks away, right? Um, she didn't look at me the second, the first time she went over the bag, she looked at me with the blue and green shirt. 
but the second time she sniffed the green shirt and then moved over to where the blue shirt had been and gives her trained file response. Remarkable, right? I, I, the dog, what the dog is doing here is alerting to the lingering scent of the blue shirt, right? That's what I would assume, yes. Right, so the blue shirt's out on a garbage bag or out on butcher paper, and the dog goes away from the green shirt but goes to some place the blue shirt Right? Correct. But the blue shirt and the green shirt had been in the same bag for many months, right? Yes. And the dog didn't alert to the bag when the two of them were together, right? Yes. And then it makes sense that the blue shirt and the green shirt touching each other, if the transfer is going to occur between the blue shirt and the ground sufficient that the dog get a final train to swamp where the blue shirt had been, it's remarkable that the dog is not alerting to the green shirt at all, right? That's peculiar. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm so tempted to say Ms. Corcoran. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, Ms. Corcoran, you would agree that false alerts happen in human re remains detection, right? Yes. In human remains, dogs can and do make mistakes. Absolutely. And that these dogs occasionally alert to locations, locations where human remains are not present, right? That is possible. False alert is where a dog indicated presence of human remains is being used interchangeably with cadaver, but I want to cover why that's mistaken. But false alerts when the dog indicates and says that there were human remains here, but there was in fact not, right? Uh, definition of false alert by the American Academy of Forensic Science says if a dog provides its trained file response and the source of, or the odor is not present, that's a false alert. Um, that's the definition of false alert. I mean, I, Do I, you want to read that? No, no that, that makes sense. But I feel like jurors can relate that it's like a dog that just didn't listen. Got it wrong. Oh, yeah. That's the, the second part's fine. Like a dog that doesn't come when you call. If you're commanding the dog to go do this thing, and the dog is saying it did, but there was nothing there, I mean, we've had that experience with dogs. That's just like, it's a common experience with dogs, right? They're, they're still dogs. They're opportunists. They do make mistakes. They're not perfect. Goofballs. Some of them are goofballs. Like you said about one dog, that dog Slim that you mentioned on Directed Bit, that was a dog that you believe to be a gentleman. He has a sense of humor. He's smart, charming, kind-hearted, social dog. That would be my description of my patrol dog. And you'd agree that dogs get bored. They have a limited attention span. They experience fatigue and hunger. I agree with that. And even the best of them, <laughs> Molly, alerts or urinates on training aids occasionally, right? She was naughty when she was young. And Molly would also get distracted by other dogs who had urinated or defecated in a location, right? There were occasions where she would present that behavior, yes. And you would agree that cadaver dog searching is far from an exact science, right? I think we need to use extreme caution um, utilizing the information that a cadaver dog provides. Because it's very dangerous, like in this instance where if I could have um, the indulgence of the prosecution here. People who exhibit 340, please. If I could ask to publish that. Do 
No? 340, 340. So my suspicion is that this is not going to look familiar to you because you were not in the house when it looked like this, right? That picture does nothing for me. Yeah. This is an exhibit of photographs taken on November 29, 2012. It's already been admitted into action. And you mentioned, well, the exhibit that was introduced a moment ago that shows the blue highlighted area. The blue highlighted area in this photograph looks different to you, right? Like what your dog alerted to was not, or is not in this photograph. Um, can you reword the question? Sure. Um, eight. And people who did it four seven is a paisley high back chair. Do you see a paisley high back chair right here? I don't um trying to help you. Um let, let, let me ask that you. doesn't look like the room that I had Mox or Molly smell. Okay. Do you remember this piece of evidence? Your dog I can tell here that it did not. It did not alert to C, the leather love C, where it's still in red line. I don't. Your dog did not alert to any of the blue lines. I can only tell you where I recall her, Molly, indicating on a brown leather couch. Right. It's one of the indications. And the leather couch is different than the leather love I thought it was the love seat. I can refresh my memory with my report. How about, how about this, uh, this exhibit that was entered as fair and accurate? Um, if you're asking me if she hit on, indicated to a brown love seat or a brown couch, that's what I'd need to refresh because that's sure. just a box. Yeah, it did label. Oh, I'm sorry. I can look at it. What I would have to do is read my report. Um, it was didn't alert to this because this has been introduced in the evidence. The dog indicated to a brown couch. Okay. And that is the approximate location. Um, it was on the right side of the couch. Yes. Which would be north. I, I don't recall. Do you see that end with the arrow pointing up there? Yes. Yeah. So it, and, it, it, and west would be to your left if you're looking at it. Sure. Uh, I alerted to the northwest side of that house, right? Your Honor, the witness has asked multiple times to see the report to refresh just the difference between which is the couch and the love seat. So I'm going to ask that that happen at this point in time. Do you hear that, Mr. Marin? Uh, I'm basing it on this piece of evidence that we objected to, but give me a second. I'm going to look back. Is it possible with how you guys have this configured to put up 470 next to what we're looking at here? People's exhibit 470? Yes, sir. So while they're doing that, Ms. 
Gun Incorporated. I've, I've got to go with that because I'll mumble it if I don't. Um, you write on here, brown leather-like sofa on the right side when facing the sofa. So is the exhibit inaccurate with where the blue mark is? At this point, I'm going to object. The exhibit clearly says August 14th of 2013, and now we're looking at an exhibit that's from late November of um, 2012. So I think this question is confusing, and I think there needs to be a clarification. I'm happy to clarify. I do not want this to be confusing. Please, please clarify. Sure. If I so, I, I don't want the image with the air pointing to blood. I need the one behind it. 470, please. Yes. So, 470. Um, on the right hand of that thing marked B, that's what the jury's being told is the location where your dog indicated and it was entered into evidence. Is that mistaken? I think we're talking about two different things. What I understood the question to be is, where did she indicate? So I gave a description of her indication being on the right side of the leather couch, on the couch. Yeah. I never clarified or t uh, said where it was positioned at the time I did this now. Does that make sense? Not at all. Okay. Is okay. this wrong? Is that where your dog alerted? On the item marked B? The dog indicated on the right side of a brown leather couch. That is B. Yes. That's yes. your testimony. I believe so. Okay. Hold on, and, just, hold on just a second. Was that where the furniture was when your dog alerted? Is that how the room was configured? I would have to review my report to tell you exactly where the furniture was at the time that I sniffed. I may have misunderstood the question. What I'm saying, and I'll, I don't know how else to explain it, I'm telling you what she pinpointed on. Yeah. So it was a brown leather couch. But where was it in the house? Yeah, it's in that location in the house. Um, I don't recall where it was, um, it, the couch was in the house. What I'm saying is she hit on a brown leather couch. So then is this not a fair and accurate representation of where your dog was alerting in the house? Asked and answered. And Judge, can we approach?
not yet. Hold on a second. Did you get that? Permission to report re approach with that report. You may. So I'm approaching with what's been marked people's exhibit five. It is page four, line thirty two. Commissioner, could you go? Yes. Do you want me to read it? Okay. So Got it. To the best of my ability, yes. And is that it? When I face the sofa, she indicated on the right side of the sofa. Don't, don't, don't even think about it. Don't even think about it. Okay. okay? Let's just move on. I'm trying to be honest. You can dream about it tonight if you want to. Your Honor, figuring out the difference between a sofa <laughs> And the Davenport and whatever well, has gotten me disorganized. So if we could take a second short break right now, this would be a great time, <laughs> in right. my opinion. Let's, let's take ten minutes then. We'll start up again at ten. Ten after. Remember my admonitions. Everybody raise for the jury. Thank you.